First, I measure out 5 milliliters of distilled water and pour this into a 50 milliliter wide neck flask. To this flask, I add 8 drops of concentrated phosphoric acid. And then I take this flask with the solution to the fume hood. In the fume hood, I weigh out 0.65 grams of nathionic acid into a weighing bottle. and then transfer this straight away into my phosphoric acid solution. I take the flask with the solution back to the bench, add a stir bar into the flask and then clamp it into an ice bath on top of a magnetic stirrer. I turn on the stir motor and adjust the position so the flask sits centrally above the stirrer. I start my timer for 15 minutes of stirring. I prepare a solution with a second reagent by measuring out 2.5 milliliters of 2 molar sodium hydroxide solution. I pour the sodium hydroxide solution into a small beaker and take this beaker to the fume hood. In another weighing bottle, I weigh out 0 0.40 grams of 2 naphthol. I add this into my sodium hydroxide solution and give it a good swill. As it doesn't dissolve easily, I hold the beaker under a hot water tap while swilling to help the naphthol dissolve in the sodium hydroxide solution. Once it's all dissolved, I add it into the ice bath with my reaction vessel. Next, I weigh out 0 0.2 grams of sodium nitrite. This compound is not harmful and can be taken as powder back to the bench. I make note of all the quantities of reagents used. After 15 minutes of stirring in the ice bath, I add the sodium nitrite to the solution of naphthionic acid and let it stir for another 5 minutes. I make note of any observations like color changes right away when they happen. After five minutes, I remove both solutions from the stirrer, remove the stir bar and add the naphthol solution into my reaction flask. I keep stirring the mixture for another five minutes in the ice bath. After that, I let the flask sit on the bench with occasional stirring, let it come to room temperature.
I make note of all observations. I remove the clamp from the stir motor as this will be used as my hot plate now. I place the flask with the reaction mixture onto the hot plate. At this point the mixture is quite thick and I stir it gently and observe it from the side not from above. When the mixture gets hotter steam will develop and the mixture will turn very dark and we can observe bubbles. Soon as it's visibly boiling we remove it from the heat and put it on the bench. It's currently a thin liquid and needs to cool off. While this is happening we can set up the filtration. Clamp a vacuum flask, attach the vacuum hose to the flask and to the vacuum outlet we add a Buchner funnel with filter paper on top of the vacuum flask. To help the mixture cool off we put it in an ice bath. Once it's become thick again and we have precipitate in the solution, we can filter our product. We wet the filter paper with distilled water and then pour the thick mixture into the Buchner funnel. To ensure good yield, we scrape out some more of the product into the funnel. And then we let it sit on the filter paper with the vacuum running. For the fastening experiment, we add 100 milliliters of water into a 250 milliliter beaker. We add five drops of acetic acid into the water. And then we use the dye that is left on the equipment from the experiment on the spatula and in the flask to prepare a colored solution. You can pour some into the reaction flask and rinse it to get our dye solution, which we can then heat up and use for dyeing different pieces of string. We will investigate the fastening of three different types of string, cotton, acrylic and wool. We take out one piece of string at a time so as to not get confused between the different varieties. At the end of the experiment the dried product gets transferred into a vial.